Hello, on this video, I'm gonna show you how to work with exceptions in Python. So let's take a look on some code. So first I'm gonna put the shebang line and also some documentation. And now I'm gonna create a code that causes an error. So the exception is when something goes wrong in your code and then the system raises an exception. Something is broken in your code. So here I'm gonna write some code that's broken. And then after that, we're gonna handle this code. So this is a very simple code. I have here a string and the string happens to be 21. And all I wanna do now is to convert this string into an integer and then print the integer. So on this run, it works fine because the integer is 21 and 21 I can convert just fine to integer. However, if I type 21 here, then obviously this cannot be converted into a integer. So if I run this code now, I have a error. And the error that I have is called a value error. It pretty much says you cannot convert 21 into an integer. So when this happens, this exception here is something very not elegant to show to the user. So we wanna avoid to show this kind of exception to the user. Instead, we wanna show a very friendly message. So the way we go around this is to catch the exception. So for that, we're gonna use the try catch. So the try catch works like that. So you're gonna try something and then down here, you're gonna catch the exception. So the try that I wanna try is to convert the string into integer. So I'm gonna just get this and I'm gonna paste right here. So with this statement in here now, I'm trying to do this work. And then the exception that I wanna catch is right here. It's the value error exception. So I'm gonna copy and I'm gonna paste right here. I know that this code, as it is right now, has a value error exception. So I'm catching the value error exception here and instead of printing this ugly error here, I'm just gonna put it a friendly message. So this is only a friendly message. If I run this code now, instead of having the ugly message, I'm gonna have this prettier message. So I'm gonna run. It did not print the number right here because it cannot convert. And then line 14, raised an exception, and then line 17 caught the exception, and then it printed a friendly message. So the other way you can catch exception is in a more generic way. This exception here only catches the value error exception. So I'm gonna create here a more generic exception. So this exception is very generic. It catches everything. If I did not have this one here, then this exception would catch everything. So I'm gonna run again the code. The generic one caught the exception. So this one here will catch everything. This one here will catch only the value error exception. Now the way it is right now, the value error exception will be caught because it comes from top to bottom. If you move this here before the value error, then it will always catch the generic one instead of catching the more specific one. Therefore, the specific one leave on the top and the generic one always, always have on the bottom. Now we can improve this a little bit here. Instead of just putting the value error, we can also put as E, and the E would be the exception that you're catching. And now right here, if you print the E as well, 
it prints whatever message is inside this exception here. So I'm going to do the same thing here in the generic. So now I'm printing the exception. So I'm going to run again to see what kind of error I get now. And this is the message that's inside the exception. So I always print this. Now, if I go to the Python documentation, I can see that there are a lot of other exceptions. Buffer error, lookup error, and one of them is the file not found error. So the file not found error here, according to the description, is raised when the file or directory doesn't exist. So let's try to generate the file not found error exception. So first I'm going to fix this so there is no error. And now I'm going to try to generate a file not found error. So here I'm trying to open a file and this file does not exist. And since it does not exist, it will throw me a file not found error. So I'm going to run this program as is. And here I have the error. So it threw me this error here. And this error was caught by the generic except here. So I do not want this error to be caught right here. So I want to create the own catch for this exception. So I'm going to copy one except. And then I'm going to put the correct except right here. And now if I run this code, this exception will be caught here. It got caught by the this exception and then it prints the bad file name and then the message. So let's take a look on one more. If I continue looking at the Python documentation, I see the, here the OS error. And this happens whenever there is a, a system related error. So let's try to generate a system related error. So one way to generate a system related error is for us to actually have the file right here, but we're going to change the permission of, of this file. So I'm going to create this file on the same directory where this Python code is stored. So now I have a file. And if I try to read this file, there will be no error. On the file that I just created, I'm going to right click and then click on properties then security. I'm going to click on the user that I'm using right now. Click on edit. Then I'm going to click on deny everything. Click on apply. OK and then OK. And then just to test it, I'm going to try to open this file. And when I try to open the file, it says here, hey, you do not have permission. So now I'm going to go back to my code and I'm going to try to open the file with the code. And then I do get an error here. So there's an error. So error number 13, permission denied. I do not have a OS catch statement right here. So I'm going to create one. And now I'm going to run this program again. And then I'm going to have this message right here, which says file access problem instead of the generic one. So this catch right here catches the exception. So the next one that I want to show you is a exception that you can raise yourself. So let's say just for testing purpose, if I don't want to have any code here, and if I just want to test the exceptions, then I can actually raise an exception at any time. So if I run this program now, there's no exception and not much code here. And if I want to raise an exception, I can. And all I have to do is type raise and then the exception that I want to raise. So let's say I want to raise the file not found exception. So I raise the exception and then I can also put a little message right here. 
And now if I run, the file not found error gets raised right here on line 15. And then it gets caught on 20. And then it sends a message. And you can raise an exception for anything you want. So here I'm raising the exception for the value error. So if I run, then the value error gets the exception. Or I can just raise a generic exception and it will be caught by the generic caught. And the next thing I want to show you here is the finally. The finally gets executed no matter what. No matter if you have or if you don't have exception, the finally gets executed. And on the finally, you do whatever you need to do, such as close files, reset variable, or print a message, or whatever it is that you want to do, you don't the finally. So I'm going to run this code again. So there is an error. The finally gets executed. And now I'm not going to raise an exception. I'm going to run again. And the finally gets executed. And the last thing I want to talk about is the warnings. So if you look at the documentation, it has not only exception, but it also has warnings. Here are the warnings. So you can raise a warning or user warning, whatever warning you want to raise, it's right here. And then another interesting thing here is the hierarchy of the exceptions and the warnings. So here you see the hierarchy and then you see the exception. And if you scroll down here, you're going to notice that the warning is under the exception. And that means that the warning can be caught by the generic exception. All right, so that's all for this video. Thanks for watching.